Hey, welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. I'm Dr. Brad Winning. I'm Dr. Sandra DeMontre. And I'm Dr. Ian Choi. Some of our keen viewers may notice we now have four Docs. We're talking with four Docs. We're like the Beatles, okay? <laughs> I'll be Paul McCartney. He's going to be John Lennon. (laughs) Paul McCartney's the richest one, that's why. I'm saying George Harrison, under the radar. Nice. What are we talking about today? So a really very interesting, intriguing article was out recently in the New England Journal of Medicine in June of this year. It was picked up by a lot of the popular press about a potential cure for rectal cancer. Obviously, there was a lot of excitement about it. We brought in some experts to talk about really what does it mean and what does it what does it mean for us going forward. So, can you guys talk a little bit about that, about that study and the results? And who you are first experts? Yes. What are you guys experts in? Um, well, we're both colorectal surgeons, so our area of expertise, colon cancer, rectal cancer is is part of that. Um, so, this article was very intriguing for us in, in our specialty. Uh, we've already had uh, you know uh, several patients who've come in and you know obviously uh, uh, asked us questions about this and it's it's uh, certainly got a lot of uh, publicity uh, over the last uh, you know, few weeks. Okay, in a nutshell, what did the article show? Uh, well, the article focuses on uh, uh, a, a a drug called uh, dostalar- dostalamab, uh, and it's a uh, it's a class of drug that focuses on uh, uh, what we call sort of a, a PD-1 blockade. Um, and the idea of this drug is that it inhibits um, a certain mechanism of uh, our T cells uh, that uh, deactivates the T cells uh, and prevents the T cells from attacking uh, other cells. Uh, so the idea of this drug is that it uh, blocks that mechanism that allows for our own T cells to then go and attack these uh, uh, cancer cells. Okay, Sandra, all rectal cancers this works for? So the study looked at uh, rectal cancers that have an MMR deficiency, so a gene uh, deficient. It only works really, or as far as we know in the study, for for that subset of rectal cancers. And that makes up about 5 to 10% of rectal cancers. So when patients come into the office and say, I don't need an operation, I mean, it's first of all very new data and it's a small subset of rectal cancers in general that would respond. And yeah, so this study had 16 patients. The most recent uh, results are that 14 of them have shown 100% success. But like you said, very small, short-term follow-up, very specific type of rectal cancer. Is there potential though that if this goes on for more patients in a longer time, this could be applied to other types of cancers or is this cancer so unique that it really, really won't be able to be applied? The you know, the whole mechanism of action is that the biology of all this, of this, this medication is actually really fascinating. And the idea of using our own immune systems to, to treat cancers is, is uh, you know, I, I think it is game changing. I mean, this drug already is being used, but right now it's only being, uh, it's only been approved for use in cancers uh, that are, uh, have already spread, they're metastatic. Uh, so we do have patients uh, who have metastatic disease who are already on this drug and are being treated with it. I mean, uh, what's novel about this study is that they've used this drug for early cancers that haven't metastasized. Uh, and uh, uh, what they found is that, you know, again, they, you've had a complete response, which is, which is amazing. But this particular drug um, uh, requires that the cancer cell have a lot of mutations on it for the T cell to be able to recognize it and attack it. So if you have a cancer cell that just has a spontaneous mutation, uh, then there's only one little mutation that's caused it to be a cancer but the rest of the cell is otherwise normal. So our own T cells can't recognize that tumor cell as being a normal. When you have this MMR deficiency, uh, you have a bunch of mutations on that cancer cell that's caused it to be a cancer, but it has also lots of other abnormalities on it that allow our T cell to recognize it, attack it, and kill it. So that's why this this drug only uh, is effective for cancers that have this MMR deficiency. I'm sure down the road uh, we'll be using our immune system in other ways to try to identify other cancer cells uh, that don't have this MMR deficiency, which again make up the vast majority of colorectal cancers. Uh, but uh, in, uh, for now, this particular drug in this particular instance uh, is only applicable to to this you know, five, four or five percent. Does it work well in metastatic uh, cases? Or does it? Mm-hmm. Um. I don't think there's a lot of data out on metastatic disease. 
but the hypothesis of this study was to say, okay, it works for metastatic disease, let's try it on our lower staged disease. Okay, so basically right now, standard of care treatment for colorectal cancer, correct me if I'm wrong, is chemo, rad, surgery? It sort of depends on uh, each individual. Everyone is assessed in terms of, you know, the stage of the tumor, they're reviewed at our tumor board rounds, but yes, in general, rectal cancer is treated in a multi-modality fashion. Chemo, radiation, surgery are all usually part of the treatment. Okay, and we'll do another video on rectal cancer. And, you know, we just wanted to cover this article. So, what, how do you guys feel? A lot of hope or a lot of fluff with this? I think bottom line is it's very interesting. Nothing in medicine is really ever 100%. So this coming out saying 100% of patients have responded is very intriguing. It's really exciting. I don't think the authors probably anticipated this. Patients were supposed to then go on to have traditional treatment. And so all of the patients actually are at the moment being watched to see what's going to happen. Okay. So it's very exciting. We'll see where it takes us. And hope for our patients, yeah. What do you tell patients? Patients are now going to come to you and say, hey, look, I'm going to insert this drugs around. What, what, what do you tell them? You said a few people come up to you already and said that. What do you, what's your response? Well, again, the vast majority of our patients uh, wouldn't be uh, applicable in, in, in this situation. Um, uh, the, the few that are, um, you know, I, I, we explained to them that uh, this is still very much in the early trial phase. It's, it's experimental. Um, go over the standard of treatment uh, and, and uh, our standard of care and standard treatment uh, for this. And uh, you know, the reality is for these earlier sort of uh, rectal cancers, our, our current treatment uh, uh, with uh, chemotherapy, radiation, surgery is highly effective. Uh, so uh, uh, you know, there but you know, there are options. Fair to say, not approved at this point in Canada or the U.S. for the routine cancer, unless you're in the study. Yes, exactly. Okay, and that's, I think that's a take home point for you when you do go talk to your doctor potentially. They say, listen, even if you do have this type of cancer, at this point, unless you get into a trial, you are not going to be offered this treatment. Because we don't know if it's the right thing. Mm -hmm. There you go, guys. So, thanks for watching. Um, any, any last minute things about it? We covered it pretty good. Anything you want other patients to know about it? No? It's a good summary. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for your info. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.